the Richter scale to measure the intensity of earthquakes, the pH scale to measure the acidity or basicity of a solution, the decibel scale to measure the loudness of sounds. These are all scales you've probably heard of, but like most people, didn't really understand what they meant or how they worked. Now that you have an understanding of logarithms, you're able to dive into a more solid understanding of them. As you probably guessed, they're all related to exponents and logarithms. Specifically, they're all based on logarithmic scales. Consider this number line. Evenly spaced ticks for us. And we'll make this into a linear number line. With this tick being zero, we can start to label the other ticks. And now we can be increasing by whatever interval we want. Let's say one, keep it simple. So we have a one here, and then here we would add another one to get two, and then we can add another one to get three, and so on. And in the opposite direction, we can subtract one. So zero minus one is negative one, and subtracting another one is negative two, and then another one is negative three, and so on. Probably just as you expect. Nothing new here. Whether we build our scale by jumping up by ones or fives or tens, it's a linear scale. And it's based on adding or subtracting the same number over and over. Nice and simple. And this scale should look pretty darn familiar to you in that it's the same scale that you've been using for years to make number lines or to set up a graph or to make measurements on a ruler or whatever. This is a linear scale. Now, Linear scales are really useful and really common. Given that, there are a lot of cases where a linear scale just isn't the best choice. This time, let's build a different type of number line. This one will be a logarithmic number line. Again, evenly spaced ticks for us. And as before, let's set this tick as one. But we'll also stop and include a way to describe our one as an exponent. If our base is 10, quite a common base, then one can be written as 10 to the power of zero, right? And then our next tick here would be 10 to the power of one. So we just multiplied by 10. In this case, instead of adding the same number over and over, we're multiplying the same number over and over, a 10. So this third tick, well, times 10 again, and we'd have 10 to the power of two and so on. Then, instead of subtracting as we go left from this one, we'll be dividing by 10. So this first one, one over 10, or 10 to the negative one. And for this tick, we'll divide by 10 again, 10 to the negative two, or 0 0.01. And then again, 10 to the negative three, or 0 0.001, and so on. So our scale, as it goes right, just keeps getting bigger and bigger by multiples of 10. And going left, it keeps getting smaller and smaller, dividing by multiples of 10. So you may ask, what about the zeros and the negatives? Where did they end up? Well, remember that we don't consider the log of zero or any negatives. They're part of the restrictions related to logarithms, and they're not part of our logarithmic scales. And there you go. That's a general layout of a logarithmic scale. Rather than labeling our ticks by adding and subtracting the same number, we instead multiply and divide by the same number, our base. So why do we care about log scales? Well, because there are many cases where a log scale is much more useful than a linear scale. In this section, we'll be looking at a few of those cases.